All right, in this week's guitar lesson, we're gonna talk about harmonies and how you can harmonize when you improvise. And it's really not that difficult to do because we're gonna connect everything back to some simple chord shapes, some simple triads, and I'll show you how to visualize them, find them, and then use them. And you can apply these to any style. It doesn't have to be just what I played in the intro there. That was just an example, but you could apply them to really anything. So in this video, we're gonna talk specifically about harmonized thirds. If you'd like to join us for the part two video, which is where we're gonna talk about harmonized six, and also download the tablature and the MP3 jam track. So basically all the lesson material that you would need to be able to pull this together and, and practice everything. You can get all of that by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP490. Okay, the first thing I should probably talk about, besides this guitar, I, sh I should just mention this. It's been a while since I've, I've talked about this one. This is the Vega Odell, early 1950s. Um, I haven't used this in a video in a while, but I've, you know, I've had this guitar uh, for a while. I found this at a guitar center here in Nashville, believe it or not. It was on the wall between all these metal guitars. They had like Jacksons and Charvels and then this old Vega Od Odell just sort of hanging there. But I just love this thing. I play it around the house a lot, but it's been a while since you've probably seen it in a video. But somebody always asks me, I actually have a few guys that, uh, that'll that email me about this. Um, I don't know, it's kind of cool. It's kind of a special guitar. Uh, anyway, uh, the first thing I need to talk about or explain is what what is a harmonized third? What does that even mean when we talk about a, a number like that? Well, a harmony is just two notes. So you have one note and then you have a note that's harmonizing with that note. And so it all really kind of goes back to the major scale. So we're going to be looking at this in the key of A. So we're going to take our uh, A major scale. And if I take any note in that major scale, We'll start with the A note, and I'm gonna go up three steps, three intervals. So I'm gonna take that note, that third interval, and then the first one that I started with, and play those together, that's a harmonized third. That's what all that means. And so you could take any of them. I could go to this third one and go up three. One, two, three. Play those together. That's a harmonized third. So, um, so anyway, when we talk about harmonized fifths, harmonized sixths, we're talking about the intervals between those two notes within the major scale. All right, now let's relate everything back to triads. I'm gonna put a lesson number up on the screen, and I didn't mean for this to become sort of a series, although it's sort of shaping out to be one. It's just sort of, these lessons kind of have momentum and they keep building on themselves. So I started with this lesson on triads, and it's been very popular and well-received. So check that out if you if you want a background on, on triads. But basically the, the gist of it was we took, look, took a look at three positions on the neck and how you can play two triads in each of those three positions. So you, in essence, end up with six triads. And so we had an upper triad and a lower triad, if you'll remember. So if we were looking at the A triad using the E shape here, we had this one and then this one the upper and the lower. Now we only play the top four strings. We eliminated uh, the fifth and sixth string just to make it easy. It doesn't mean that you can't play triads with those strings, but you start dealing with six strings and there's just too many variables. And most of the lead stuff you're gonna play happens on those top four strings. So within the top four strings of your E shape, now remember this is an A chord when you're up here on the barring on the fifth fret, you have two triads, lower, upper. All right, so here's where harmonies come in. If we take a look at this lower triad here, for example, and I just play the bottom two strings of it, I'm playing A harmonized third. If I play the top two strings of that triad, I'm playing another harmonized third. So I have this one and I have this one. There's two in there, right? Now, if we look at the top part in that top triad there, and I play these two strings, that's actually not a harmonized third because listen, they're one, two, three, four intervals apart. So that's a harmonized fourth. And you can hear the difference if you, and this is a big thing is training your ear to understand those intervals. When you can, when you get comfortable with it and you start using them a lot, you'll be able to do that and you'll be able to differentiate. I can tell that that doesn't sound as pretty to me as this. That has a prettier sound than this. And to me, this harmonized fourth is kind of a Chuck Berry thing. So I think of that as being something that you hear a lot in rock and roll. You also hear it in a lot of uh, Eastern music when you think of... 
yeah. just sliding it up into different positions that when you harmonizing in fourths like that, you can see it just doesn't sound that pretty. It's, I mean, at least not to my Western ear. It gives me an uneasiness as opposed to something like that. Um, okay, so now that we have our harmonies for, for A here, we have this one, which is a harmonized third. We have this one, which is a harmonized third. And then we'll throw in this harmonized fourth up here. You know where they come from. They come from either the A bar chord, if you want to think of it that way, or this triad and this triad. Now you can take those harmonies and you can move them around. You can slide into them like that. This will be a big light bulb moment once you realize this. So you can just take that, just this information you have so far, and you can already start to come up with a melody. Now that's not a very clever melody, but you can start to hear a little bit of a melody happening just by sliding into those harmonies. Um, okay, let's take a listen to that little intro piece. I'm gonna, we'll listen to the first part, which I played over the A chord, and then we'll break that down. So it's starting here with this bottom harmony, and then sliding into this one, and then we're coming up to that harmonized fourth. So you put it all together and you have one, two, three, four, one, two. And all of that represents your A chord. And it makes sense because I'm basically just playing the notes out of the A chord. So you have. And then the next thing that I played goes. Now this is keeping that bar there on the fifth fret, uh, first two strings, but hammering onto that seventh fret, second string. You're still playing the top th two strings, but when you're playing that, uh, you, there's different ways you can think about it. That's another harmonized third. Look, one, two, three, three intervals between those notes. But you can also think, if we're thinking about chord shapes, you can think of your A6 chord. And I talked about that, again, I'll put that lesson number up on the screen again. This was the beginning of these triads, this triad series. But I showed you how you can add a finger to your to this triad to convert it into an A, an A6. So you can think about this little harmony that way. When we play this, you're kind of playing two notes out of your harmonized six. Also, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the sixth interval. That's why it's called an A6. Sixth interval by adding that note uh, to your A triad. Um, okay, so we have. Then the song goes to the D chord. Let me play that and then we'll, we'll break that down. So when we're talking about our D chord, I'm thinking about the D chord here using the A shape, right? And then that has its own little triad. So we have this triad, the upper triad of that, which looks like this, and then we have the lower triad. So when we switch to our D chord, I play this. Now, even though that was an A6 just two seconds ago because of the chord underneath it was an A, since there's a D underneath it, this same harmony represents your D chord. And you can see, it's just the top two strings out of your triad. And then I came down here and played strings two and three on the seventh fret. That's the bottom part of that triad. So we played the top part and the bottom part, but it's just my D chord, my D triad. So we have, from the beginning, we have. Here's the D chord. Now watch this. Oh, I love this. This is where we get into Chet Atkins territory. So I keep my ring finger there on that seventh fret, second string. My index finger drops down to the fifth fret, third string. I play those two notes. I'm hinting at a D7 chord just by playing those two notes. And that's what I was thinking about. I was thinking about this. That triad, that's a D7 triad. And I'm, I'm thinking like the way that I would if I was just strumming the chords. So if we took all this harmony stuff out of it and I was just playing along with the chords. There's your A, here's my D. D7 to get me back to the A. And I know to do that, and you'll learn to do that too if you, if you don't know it already. You, you, play the, you play your chord, and then you play the seven chord and that creates the tension and then you resolve the tension. You, you get you back to the one. And so I was thinking that in terms of my melody by dropping in that, that uh, flat seven there. So. Now watch this. That's where it goes into Chet territory. 
by playing that, that tension release, that D7, back to your A. He does that quite a bit, and I know I stole that from him, from, from some song. So, from there we go back to uh, these two notes, which is right out of this A triad. And then watch this. That's a little walk down to get us to our E chord, our five chord. And most of this is repeat of what we've already done. We're going back to the, barring the first two strings here on the fifth fret. There's our little embellishment, if you want to think of it that way, our A6. And then we're going to walk it down, seventh fret, third string, down to the uh, sixth fret on the third string. And again, there's my A triad, right? I'm just playing those two notes, though, the little harmony. And then down to this. And these two notes represent our E chord. Why is that? Because, let's think about our E triad here. It's using that D shape, right? Also part of your C shape. Just depends on how you look at it, but it's that little triangle shape there. Just like your D chord. But if we just played strings two and three, you're playing that harmony. Now that's a harmonized fourth, so I realize that's not a third. But I thought it fit well to play that melody. We're, again, we're just following these triads here. From the beginning we have... Here's our D, D7, back to our A, down to our E. So then we might as well play the top part of that little E triad, which are these two notes, right? There's the triangle, I'm playing that. And now watch this. We walk back to the A. There's the A chord playing that D shape. So I only played strings two and three. You can, hopefully you can see what's going on here. We're just playing triads. Or at least that's what I'm thinking about as I'm playing these melodies. I'm not thinking about counting these intervals or any of that stuff. I'm just strumming these little triads in my head, but I'm picking out just two notes of them. So this walk up is walking up the major scale, but harmonizing it. Now each of these steps are harmonized thirds, but you can think of it this way. This would be like your E chord. This would represent like your D chord, right? Right? So we have E, D, E again, and then back to our A. So if we were strumming this, you might do something like this. E, D, E, A. You can think of it in, in those terms. Or you can think of it as just harmonizing the major scale. Now, the one thing you'll notice as you get into these harmonies, especially if you're walking up a string like that, is you'll notice a repeat in patterns. So in this case, you've got two patterns. You've got one where they're right beside each other on the fret. So you got the fourth fret, first string, fifth fret, second string. You want to go into this position, there's a fret in between these two. Fret in between them, back to them being side by side. You can call, label them as whatever you want in your head, but you've got these two shapes that you can just keep walking up and down the fretboard and getting the major scale by harmonizing it that way. So once we're up here, we're back to our A chord. So now the song is back to the A chord, and we have... So it came up to this position, and then back to our A chord here, using the D shape. That's where it's coming from. It's coming from that triad. And then watch this, and then it goes to the D, and I went... This is a repeat of everything we did down here. We're just doing it up here. Hopefully you can see that. I'm now playing over the D chord in the song, so I'm using the E shape, sliding into that harmony, and then up on strings one and two, and then we go up to here, which is back to our A. Why is that back to our A? There's the top part of our A triad, there's the bottom part, right, using the A shape. So we have... I did a little half bend there on the second string, uh, 14th fret, while I held this 12th fret first string. Then strings one and two on the 12th fret, 
And th those two notes represent your E chord, because here's my E triad. So from here I went. There's that little hammer on again to my 14th fret second string. And then I come down to here, which is the A uh, triad there using that little D shape. Just strings one and two. But hopefully you can see that when we came up to this D part, we're repeating everything we did here. We're just doing it in a different position on the neck, but it's the same principle. It's playing off this E chord shape and the triads that live, the two triads that live inside that E chord shape, if, at least if we're talking about the top four strings. Um, let me back up and play through this first half one more time, and then I'll see you in part two where we're gonna go over harmonized sixth. So we'll talk about, actually we'll throw in a harmonized fifth in one little spot too. But most of that's gonna be about harmonized sixth and what that's all about. And we're gonna be using these same triads, we're just gonna be looking at how we can pull these harmonized sixth out of it. So hopefully this isn't overwhelming, and hopefully you've picked up a few ideas, and you can start implementing them right away. If you've liked this lesson, give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment. I always appreciate that. I read them all. And if you have a question, you can leave a comment as well. All right, we'll take a look at this first half one more time and then we'll see you in part two. Mm -hmm.